So we dive into the inner psyche of Mikoto. And I never expected a character to be somewhat this complex, especially this character, Mikoto. I didn't think he would take this type of path. After looking at this episode and re-watching, and I re-watched the episode just to get the entirety of the main point here, the main point of this episode was showing how far Mikoto will go as a person and what he will do to satisfy his ever-changing self because if he stays at one point for too long, it becomes boring and then he wants to change. And that's kind of been the main focus of Dorodoro. This was brought up at the beginning of the series. I remember, not the exact word for word line, but I remember it being mentioned in the first season of Dorodoro. Maybe the first like four to five episodes. And Isaiah is the one that mentioned it to him. The thing is, is Mikoto's character. We found out that he didn't want to live an ordinary normal life. He wanted to live a abnormal life. He wanted to live a life that was filled with nothing but supernatural entities, dollars, different gangs, fights, all sorts of crazy and wacky shit going on. And over time, when you get used to this situation, that abnormal situation turns into an ordinary day, an ordinary situation. And Mikoto eventually, once again, was back at point A. He was back at the same ordinary self, boredom, and he wanted to change things. And then eventually it led him to wanting to change the dollars, which led to some of the main plot points in recent seasons of Dorodoro, what he's been doing with his actions to change things. And then, in the latest episode, this episode, he changes it once again to where he realizes how far he will go to change his ordinary life into something abnormal. He would even go as far as to hurt his friend. He has known his best friend, his childhood friend, he has known for a very long time. Someone he cares about deeply. Someone that, you know, he went uh, all his way for just to make things better. I mean, the entire focus of Dorodoro has kind of been trying to help out the relationship between the uh, trio, friend for instance, Henri, Kida, and Mikoto. That, that's like one of the main plot threads of the series. And seeing how Mikoto could just come in and then shoot Kida like he did, it, there's no stopping what Mikoto can do in the future if he is let to do whatever he wants to his own devices. And that's the scary thing about this episode. It really shows you what type of character he is and how he actually realized what type of person he is. And I feel like that's the most terrifying thing about this episode and why I think I love this episode of Dorodoro so much is because Mikoto, he came to terms with, he realized what type of person he was. He realized he is a monster. He is a person that if he could hurt his best friend, he could hurt many others and it would be normal to him. And what he's scared of is when he can hurt his own friends. Let's just say this. Let's just say Mikoto does not kill himself, okay? And let's just say he's crazy and he continues do going down the path he's doing. For instance, he's shooting his best friends and killing them. What is going to stop him from getting worse? If that becomes the ordinary, for instance, the ordinary to killing his best friends or shooting his best friends, what's the next step? What is the next step that Mikoto would choose that for it can be abnormal? And then eventually that turns into ordinary and then he has to go for the next step. The point I'm getting at is, is Mikoto realized this. He realized how terrifying he is because he is a monster and he wants to stop it himself because he realizes if he's continued down this path or he continues, it's going to become a whole lot worse. And I love that how he came to terms with that. I and mean, then he pretty much says, you know, I need to do this myself and pretty much wants to kill himself. Now, I'm not saying that's the proper way to go about this, but it's a really cool way to look at his character. And I didn't expect the type of development that Mikoto got. And, you know, the complex development he got, especially with finding out more about how he thinks, how he works. And, you know, what he looks at the situation with Kida and Henri. And I love that. A very good episode, a very powerful episode that really took the time to kind of conclude this plot point with Mikoto's character. Now, when it comes to my personal favorite characters, I gotta say, I think Mikoto might be one of my personal favorites now. He might be in the number one spot after this, even higher than Izaya, because seeing how his character is written... It's something I love about Draw Draw. It really surprises you with some of these characters with the characterization they get. And then this right here, it surpassed my expectations. I did not think I would like Mikoto this much as a character and want to see more of him in the future. Sadly, if I'm correct, next week's episode is the finale of Draw Draw. That is it. We're done. It's GG. End of series. Wrap it up. 
And that's kind of sad, because, I mean, if this really is the end, I mean, if Mikado really does kill himself, it's kind of sad, because I'd like to see what he would have become if, you know, he was left to his own devices and continued down that path. I wonder how evil he might become. He would be a worse nightmare than Isaiah ever could be, because, I mean, with a man that's willing to do what he's already doing, I can't imagine if, you know, he's left to do whatever he wants for the next five years what he could do. It'd be terrifying. So, yeah, I mean, great episode. I enjoyed it. Not really much of a big discussion on the episode. It was mainly just on the character of Mikuro. So I don't think I could really call this a discussion or, you know, episode review of Gerald at all. I might title this something else. I might just call it, you know, talking about Mikuro's character, or, you know, how Mikuro's complex or something like that. I'll figure out a title. It's a working title in progress. I'll figure out a title before I upload the video. But I just gotta say that that's the main thing I want to talk about. Everything else is very straightforward. I mean, you have the different stuff going on with, you know, Kujiragi and all them. But I mean, when it came to the main central point of the episode, I felt like that was the one of the most important aspects aspects of the episode. Everything else is kind of straightforward, we already knew. So, yeah. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below. How did you feel about this episode? How did you feel about, you know, Mikoro and what he did and what he is doing? Do you feel like he's dead? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. How do you feel about what he did to Kita? I love you all so much. You have a wonderful day or night wherever you live. Please be safe. Chibi out.